People are already putting machine guns on the back of robot dogs, and artificial intelligence is promising to be a real game changer. But what is it going to change the game into? Is it going to make the game better, or knock the whole damn game board right on the floor? I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. It is a beautiful end of the day right now. There's mist in the air, it's in the low 30s. It's just an absolutely beautiful day. It's got me thinking about the beauty of nature. And that kind of gets me thinking about things on the flip side, which is something else that's very unnatural, uh, which is really uh, being spoken and talked about, discussed a lot, which is artificial intelligence. I know here in the prepping community it's being discussed, in the larger community it's being discussed. Here in the prepping community a lot of people are fairly concerned about it, and I don't discount that. Uh, people have good reason to be concerned about robot dogs walking around with machine guns on their back. I think that's something we should keep our eye on, but we should also keep in mind that a lot of this stuff is, it has the potential to uh, empower us in a lot of ways while it also has the potential to have robot dogs attacking us with machine guns. And I think we should kind of look at both of those things. You know, be wary of the robot dogs, but also think that these are tools that we might be able to kind of leverage in ways that might be kind of interesting. So, uh, what is an example of that? Well, I've just recently started a new YouTube channel. I'm not trying to use this video as an advertisement for this YouTube channel, although it'll totally be that, because I'm going to tell you there's a link here up in the corner, and you should definitely check it out. It is the funniest AI generated story that I have ever heard. I, on this other channel, I'm uh, just creating stories that, well, I'm not doing the creating, I'm prompting AI to create stories, and then the stories are being narrated by an uh, artificial intelligence narrator, and then the images are being created by an AI, uh, you know, digital artist, and they kind of just got all packaged up, and I think that they're really, really fun. Uh, the one that I have the link to right here, which I would suggest you check out after this video, uh, it was intended to be kind of like a horror story, but AI doesn't really necessarily always understand the difference between comedy and horror. <laughs> Maybe it's a fine line. And uh, I was I was listening to this story when it came out, and me and my boy, like, we couldn't breathe. We were laughing so much. Maybe you guys won't think it is quite as funny as I did. But the point is, these tools are pretty interesting, and we can be afraid of them, and we should be wary about them, and we should keep our eyes on them, but they can also really empower us in lots of ways that I can't even necessarily think of at this point. You know, just during this video, I've already mentioned that I've I've kind of created this other channel and uh, you know it's creating stories that if you were gonna be like a human creator it would take you you know maybe like you know a solid morning to you know write the story and then have a, a voiceover artist uh, you know record it you know you know that would it would take you know whatever amount of time that takes you know several minutes to record that and then to create the imagery uh, for it to be hours and hours you know this would be like you know a full day or maybe a couple of days to create each one of these stories well the computer does it in like five minutes or so, and it's only about like 10 minutes of interaction time uh, for my part. Uh, you know, one criticism of this type of thing though is that a lot of people say, well, AI art is all kind of derivative. You know, it's just kind of stealing things from other artists and it's repackaging them together and then uh, pissing it out and kind of claiming that it's new art, but it's not actually real art, it's just really derivative. Uh, and I'm not gonna argue against that, but I would ask, isn't that kind of exactly what human art is also, uh, where, you know, and I'm one of these uh, kind of creative types, and that used to be my job, where I would, you know, create images or create scripts or create whatever. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what humans do as well, is that we, you know, take other things that we've seen, other images, other films, other, you know, pieces of music, experiences that we've had in our life, landscapes that we've seen, and we kind of just reprocess that through our reprocess that through our heads, and then kind of spit something out that is kind of derivative of our experience. And we do all this kind of unconsciously, so we don't really think about it in in those terms, or at least most people don't tend to think about it in those terms. But I mean, that really is awfully close to what it is. I mean, think of for example, uh, two films like uh, um, Star Wars and. I don't know, Wizard of Oz. You, you, know, you take those two together and you kind of, you know, compare kind of the story structures, like, uh, you know, you, it's sort of like the, this adventure going uh, through some kind of like a strange land in the Wizard of Oz and in Star Wars, you got Luke Skywalker and he's kind of going off out into the galaxy, which is kind of like a strange land. I guess Luke Skywalker is sort of like the, the, uh, the Dorothy character. It's like, you know, the farm boy, the farm go girl that kind of goes out and tries to save the world. Uh, you got like, um, I don't know, uh, Han Solo and, and the Tin Woodsman 
are kind of you know th those are sort of uh, uh, comparable uh, comparable to each other where you know not, both of them like think they don't really have a heart but in in reality they actually do have a heart I mean you can draw all sorts of power is Toto Chewbacca I don't, I don't know maybe maybe the the, uh, the cowardly line is kind of Chewbacca although uh, Chewbacca never has his uh, you know his uh, courage questions in the story you know it's never exactly but uh, you know, certainly humans uh, kind of take things they've seen in the past, they kind of repackage them, and they, they put them out there. So I think it's really interesting, and I think that this is a time that we can really uh, either choose to be afraid of these tools, and I do think that we should be wary of them, and we should, do, uh, we should definitely keep our eyes on them, but we shouldn't uh, be so afraid of them that we forget to think about the opportunities that they might present to them, uh, they, they might present to us. And I don't just mean they pre present us the opportunity to, uh, you know, create a YouTube channel that has like, you know, these weird stories and things like that. And again, I'd highly recommend you check it out because funniest story, funniest horror comedy story I've ever heard uh, there. Um, you know, but who knows what we're going to be able to do with this kind of technology, you know, and, you know, in the same way that, uh, you know, the refrigerator made it so that, you know, a whole heck of a lot of, uh, you know, ice delivery guys, who you wouldn't need today because it's nice and cold out, uh, you know, ice delivery uh, men, uh, you know, I, I was going to say people, but it's like back then I think it was all guys. Um, you know, they, they got put out of work because, you know, the refrigerator came in. And that's certainly going to happen with AI. It's going to take a lot of, like, creative jobs away. But, again, how, how creative were they to begin with? You know, again, myself, having had one, a lot of what the stuff that I did was very derivative. And, honest to God, usually clients don't want anything that really even seems new. They want something that's kind of like what they always saw before, but just different enough so that people don't, you know, uh, claim that they're completely ripping something off. Um, so it is going to put a lot of people out of work, but... You know, I, I don't even know the answers to it. I have, I like to have faith that it is going to put some people out of work, but that it is going to create other opportunities. And I don't know what those opportunities are, and um, I think that's the way that it always has been. Whenever there is a massively disruptive technology that comes in, uh, you know, nobody, uh, you know, maybe there's a few futurists here and there that can really, you know, see that deep into the future. But, uh, you know, nobody really knows the way that the chips are going to fall. And I think as a human, you just need to, to some degree, have faith. And I'm saying this as a prepper. I'm like a, like a doomsday prepper saying, have faith in humanity in the future. But I think that we should, uh, because if you don't have at least some faith, yeah, faith isn't the right word, hope. Hope is the right word. If you don't have at least some hope for the future and a desire to get to that hopeful future, then the only future that we're going to have is the negative future that all us you know, people here on uh, you know, YouTube in the prepping world are warning you guys about. That's all that's going to be waiting for us if we don't remember to have that kind of hope for the possibility of things to be better than they are today, the better than they were yesterday. I don't know if AI is going to do that. Maybe AI is just going to be a whole pile of robot dogs with machine guns on their back. But it definitely will be only that if we don't use our own imaginations and imagine the type of world that we could have using these tools that goes beyond robot assassinating dogs. That's it. I hope you find this uh, video interesting and helpful. I do hope you check out my other channel. Uh, you know, it's, it's all, I'm, I'm kind of experimenting with it. There's, there's a, a vampire themed romance novel and I've never read a romance novel before in my life, but I tried to get the thing kind of prompting in that direction. I don't know whether it wrote a good romance novel because I don't know if any of them are good, but it definitely wrote something that sounds like a romance novel to me. So if you're interested, check that out and, uh, you know, see some of the like truly bizarre things that are popping out. There's also a lot of poop related things on there and my boy just comes up with ideas and he's like, daddy, make a, uh, make a uh, story uh, where poop wants to get out of the toilet and explore the world. And I'm like, okay, River, I'll do that for you. <laughs> so stories like that are there too. That's it. Thanks for watching. Hey, YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, I'm sure that you're gonna like this video where we talk about what you should do if you are really concerned that artificial intelligence is gonna turn our world into a hellscape. There are steps that you can take right now to try to get ready for it.